He is a God that keeps his promises. And you know, so many people think that God is done with Israel and God forsook Israel. Why? Because they crucified the Savior, because they've been a disobedient and gainsaying people. You know, but he didn't forsake them when they were in Egypt. He delivered them out of Egypt. He didn't forsake them permanently when they went into uh, Assyrian captivity, when they went into Babylonian captivity. He delivered his people. When he was, uh, when his people were under Rome's authority, God delivered them out of it. And when they were even under Hitler and so many died, millions died in the Holocaust, he left a remnant. And you know, if God would have at any point of time forsaken the Jews, or if he even would have listened to Moses when Moses was ready to have him wiped out, <laughs> and then there was times where God was ready to wipe them out and Moses pleaded for him. I'm glad they never agreed at the same time <laughs> concerning Israel. But God would, he's only as good as he is his word. Your word is your bond and God keeps his word. He will establish that nation of Israel as the head of all nations. That nation of Israel will go on through the eons of eternity and remain a nation. Why do you believe that Satan wants to destroy that people? Because of God's promises. He wants to make God a liar. Why do you believe he wants to destroy us? Because he wants to make God a liar. Or at least make him out to be a liar in our own minds that he doesn't keep his promises. But God is able to keep what he's committed unto us. Welcome back to Approved Unto God. I'm Joshua Govitz. We're in the book of Joshua chapter number 14, and we're gonna be picking up in verse number six, and we're gonna to try to close out the chapter today. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said these forty and five years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. So his strength is, it never, it never even went down one bit after 45 years as an 85 year old man. That's, that's just amazing. Now, therefore, give me this mountain where the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, uh, of Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel, and his name of Hebron before was, and the name of Hebron before was Kerjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. Father, Lord, please bless your word. I pray, God, you speak through me. Uh, help me, Lord, um, with my struggles here mentally and with my mouth and just every bit of uh, distraction that's trying to cause me not to read this, not to teach this. Lord, not to focus so many different angles, Lord, every time. And uh, Lord, give me the strength to overcome as Caleb overcame and uh, as Joshua overcame and as Jesus overcame. Give me the overcoming power, Lord, to be able to teach this message. And I pray that what I say uh, according to your spirit is very powerful and uh, necessary to the hearer 
and uh, that it would help my life as well as theirs. In Jesus' name, amen. Spiritual warfare. <laughs> then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. The children of Judah. Now, Caleb was a member of a clan called the Kenizzites. And that Kenizzites may have been uh, also Moses' father-in-law's tribe. And um, so we know that Moses left Egypt and Moses joined unto a tribe uh, when he protected those women at that well. And then uh, Jethro, his father-in-law, he was under, under him for 40 years, which was a humbling experience. Um, you know, living there with the father-in-law for 40 years. And God uses different means of humbling us before he would use us. And uh, that's a very good way to humble a man. And, uh, you know, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. But when the father and mother sticks around or the father-in-law or mother-in-law sticks around, it really can make for a complicated situation. But sometimes that could even be by design. It's God's will for you to marry and to leave under uh, the, the authority of your parents or the, the authority of the wife, which was her parents. Um, but then sometimes certain circumstances may, may be on purpose too, uh, for God to mold you in a certain way. That was the case here with Moses. Um, and we see that Joshua came unto Gilgal and he was speaking to the children of Judah. Now, he was also um, assimilated his family assimilated into that tribe of Judah, just as Rahab the harlot assimilated into Israel. Uh, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, well, he married a woman that was of the children of Israel. That was somewhat frowned upon. They weren't to be mixed in races, but then sometimes when people would believe in the God of the Bible, they would assimilate into Israel and they would their God would be uh, the, the God of Israel. We see that also with uh, Naomi and Ruth joining the God of the Bible of Naomi. <laughs> you know, my God shall be your God. And after Naomi's husband died, she said, I'm going to join with you. I'm going to join up to your God. And uh, we see that throughout the Bible. Then the children of Ju Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. And sometimes we need to remind, here, here Caleb is reminding Joshua, because Joshua was there when they both spied out the land and gave the good report, and he was there when Moses promised him that land. And sometimes we have to live this Christian life and realize that we ought to remind the Lord of his promises. Believing that these promises were given to us, we need to bring them up to God in prayer. We need to proclaim them and claim them. But before we claim them, we need to proclaim them. And here we see Caleb proclaiming what was given to him, what he had by right from Moses when he first 45 years ago went and spied out that land and, and Moses promised him that land. 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And 40 is a number of trials and he's 40 years old and uh, God speaks through him to the people of Israel, but they don't hearken to his voice. They don't hearken to Joshua's voice. Who do they end up hearkening to? They hearken to the voice of the other 10. 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea, Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. And God's always after the heart. Here we see the heart of a man who is after God who believes in God and believes in his promises, who doesn't see the giants as an obstacle that is uh, that he's unable to overcome or 
the enemy, the, the fence cities, uh, as he's seen Jericho, he didn't think that this wall is too, too tall for us to uh, overcome. The, this, this city is too great. This land is too powerful for us. No, he believes God, that God said to Joshua that no, no one will ever be able to overcome you, that I will go before you. And if God goes before us, who could be against us if God's for us? It's a matter of faith. It's, it's faith or it's unbelief. There's very little middle ground. And um, our whole Christian life is going to be a, a walk of faith. What did God say? The just shall live by faith. But we oftentimes seek after a sign, and it's an evil and adulterous generation that seeketh after a sign. What sign was given to us, according to Jesus? There shall no, no sign be given except for the sign of Jonah, uh, Jonah that was in the heart of the earth, or he was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, typifying Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the sign that was given to us. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and was buried and rose again from the dead on the third day. He is a sign. Jesus Christ rising from the dead is a sign. But who believes <laughs> that sign? You know, when the rich man died, he went to hell. And when uh, Lazarus, the poor beggar, died, he went to heaven. And what did the rich man say to Abraham in regards to um, to Lazarus? He said, send him back. Send him back. And if one rose from the dead, then they would believe. And what did Moses say? Yeah, I think you're right. I will send him back as if he had that power. <laughs> you know, he said, they have Moses and the prophets. And if they don't believe them, neither would they be, they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You say, well, I'd be persuaded if somebody came back from the dead. No, you're not, because somebody did come back from the dead. God in the flesh came back from the dead. God rose up Jesus from the dead. He rose himself from the dead. He says, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And the spirit of him that raised him from the dead, the Holy Spirit raised up Jesus from the dead. And yet you don't believe. Well, he didn't just raise up and nobody see him. He was seen and they mistook him as the, be the gardener. And then he was seen, and uh, for 40 days, he was seen of, of his disciples and over 500 witnesses. And you say, well, I need evidence. What, history is not evidence enough for you? It's evidence, evidence enough for you to believe the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Why? Because you read it somewhere? But why do you have the bias against the word of God? you read in history and not even from just the bible but from josephus and from uh, other sources ancient historians that wrote of this man jesus that was not merely a man but was the god man that rose again from the dead and that he ever liveth to make intercession for us he actually ascended and they there were witnesses to his ascension why would so many people give their lives for a resurrected savior if he never resurrected why when they were being tortured would they not just deny him if it was uh just a matter of a farce or some sort of made-up thing it wasn't it, it, it was real it was true and and god did come in the flesh god did raise up from the dead jesus christ and um you're either going to believe that report or you're going to doubt it and you're going to have unbelief Unbelief is something to be repented of, but it's not the only thing to be repented of. You know, don't get it twisted and think that the gospel is just a matter of unbelief to belief. Though the unbelief of many is very strong, and sometimes that is a very hard thing to do, just to believe. But it's even harder, and it makes things a lot harder to believe when when you love sin, when when you love being a doubter. When you love living in darkness, when you love fornication, when you love partying, when you love drinking, when you love uh, carousing, when you love pride, and, and when you love getting the preeminence, and you love attention, and you love always being right, and you love always winning arguments, 
and you love exercising authority over people and being a dictator and you love manipulating people and you love narcissism and you love bitterness and you love envy you, you just got to find somebody to envy and want their position you just got to find somebody to remain bitter with and you love and hang on to the bitterness you know i remember hearing about a lady that was praying and trying to ask jesus to save her and she just couldn't do it and the preacher asked what's your problem what's the hold up and i believe the preacher was actually charles spurgeon and the woman she mentioned some things that were going on in her head and one thing was bitterness she was bitter and she lived in bitterness all her life and what did uh spurgeon tell her oh don't worry you can hang on to that bitterness oh you don't have to repent just ask jesus to save you well she was trying but it wasn't working she couldn't even do it and he said you know what you have to repent of that bitterness and if you'll hang on to that bitterness it'll drag you to hell and when she finally let go of the bitterness and let jesus christ save her from that and take it from her and i'm not i'm not to say that bitterness is removed instantaneously in everybody that comes to jesus you may fight that thing you may it may keep raising its head up and you may have to pray for grace to forgive somebody your whole life but you got to give god a foothold you got to say you know what lord i'm willing to turn from that bitterness if that's what's blocking me from from receiving you i give it up i put the white flag up repentance is very necessary for salvation it's necessary after salvation to keep a good walk with god and to keep good fellowship nevertheless my brethren that uh, nevertheless my brother that went up with me made the heart of the people melt and you know when you give a negative report you know what you say and unbelief affects others there's times where i have been so discouraged because of my circumstances and even discouraged with god that i've given a negative report of god that i remember going to the jail and telling my uncle kiki how discouraged i was and how god has caused my discouragement and it, it, i said it wasn't even so much I, I sometimes i wasn't sure if it was the devil or if it was god but you know i was nevertheless i would just i was discouraged and I, I was wanting to quit and i remember my uncle almost not coming to church the next day as i almost didn't come to church the next day but we both ended up there and i remember him telling me that he almost didn't go because he was so distraught by my negative attitude by my wanting to quit that made him want to quit and he said don't quit because so many people are looking to you and i've had other people tell me that before too that if you gave up many others would give up and you know how many people follow their pastor and their pastor's lead and if the pastor if the devil can get the pastor to quit or if the, the devil could get the pastor to give up or get out of the ministry how it affects so many others and that's why he's aiming for them that's why we do need to encourage our pastors we need to pray for them they're not perfect but the devil is is really gunning for them and oftentimes you know we fuel the fire of the devil when we talk bad about him and i'm guilty you know i'm guilty if we prayed half as much for our pastors as we did talk about them in a negative fashion, I believe the pastors would have so much more power in the pulpit. They would have so much more confidence to be the leader that they ought to be. And Moses swear on that day saying, surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. And, uh, he believed that report. He believed the leadership. He believed what Moses said, and thy children's children, for, or, and thy children's forever. Not only will it be an inheritance for you, but it would also be passed down to your children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord, my God. I like how Moses says he's my God, and you wholly followed my God, and I'm confident that God will give you this land, and He will give it to your children. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And oftentimes, 
it's just the Lord that's keeping us going. It's the Lord that keeps us alive. When we have hope in the Lord, he can keep us going. But when we doubt and we, and we lose sight of the goal and what's before us and we get our eyes off Jesus, oftentimes people give up, people die, people fall out. <sighs> it's so important that we keep our focus on the Lord and we keep our eyes on the prize. What does Paul say? Forgetting those things that are behind, I press toward the mark, towards the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And uh, this man never gave up hope, even after he wandered. You know, he was forced to wander, even though he wasn't part of the group that had the unbelief. Him and Joshua both had to wander and watch everybody pass away, watch that whole generation die off in the wilderness. And don't you think that there could have been doubts that arose? What if what if God will have us die here too? What if what if we don't ever see that land? I'm sure questions and doubts arose, but God kept them alive that whole time. Why? Because he is a God that keeps his promises. And you know, so many people think that God is done with Israel and God forsook Israel. Why? Because they crucified the Savior, because they've been a disobedient and gainsaying people. You know, but he didn't forsake them when they were in Egypt. He delivered them out of Egypt. He didn't forsake them permanently when they went into uh, Assyrian captivity, when they went into Babylonian captivity. He delivered his people. When, he was, uh, when his people were under Rome's authority, God delivered them out of it. And when they were even under... Hitler, and so many died, millions died in the Holocaust, he left a remnant. And you know, if God would have at any point of time forsaken the Jews, or if he even would have listened to Moses when Moses was ready to have him wiped out, <laughs> and then there was times where God was ready to wipe them out and Moses pleaded for him. I'm glad they never agreed at the same time <laughs> concerning Israel. But God would... Is he's only as good as he is his word. Your word is your bond. And God keeps his word. He will establish that nation of Israel as the head of all nations. That nation of Israel will go on through the eons of eternity and remain a nation. Why do you believe that Satan wants to destroy that people? Because of God's promises. He wants to make God a liar. Why do you believe he wants to destroy us? Because he wants to make God a liar or at least make him out to be a liar in our own minds that he doesn't keep his promises. But God is able to keep what he's committed unto us. And now behold, the Lord have kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and five years, not only in the wilderness wanderings, but he didn't allow him to die prematurely in war and battle as they defeated the foe of the Canaanite people. He kept Joshua alive. He kept uh, and he also kept Caleb alive throughout all these battles that they fought. So five years of battling as an old man, and you think, oh, I'm an old man and I'm all done. I'm, I'm through with these battles. No, you're not. God will give you your strongest battles later in life. And if you walk in his spirit, his spirit will give you strength as he gave Caleb strength. Do you believe it was just some kind of natural strength or do you believe it was supernatural? I believe it was a supernatural strength he gave him to fight in his old age. Just like my grandpa. My grandpa was an old man, but he still had strength, strength above myself or many others that are much younger than him. And uh, it, it's amazing just to see in real time, just to see it in my grandpa, to see it in my grandmother, to see it in my mother even as she was passing, just the strength that God gave her, <laughs> the spiritual strength she had, stronger than anybody I've ever seen. Her faith would not waver. She would never doubt God. She didn't question, question God. And it, it's sad how often I do, how often I struggle with that. Um, but we are to believe him. 
we are to be strengthened through our circumstances. And God will give us the strength to fight another day, to live another day, to do another battle with the devil, to do another battle with the principalities and powers. He will strengthen us when I am weak. Paul said, I am strong. He's strong in me. Even since the Lord's, let's read this verse 10 again. And now behold, the Lord have kept me alive as he said these 45 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. That's a miracle right there. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. And uh, <laughs> let's keep going here. I, I, was gonna, I don't want to make this longer than I need to. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. And they made songs about it. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there. That's the giants. And that the cities were great and fenced. Not only did it have great giants in that city, but the city itself was great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. What confidence he has. And you know who we remember in history? We remember the strong. We remember those that had great confidence. We remember the General Lees. Robert E. Lee and, and Stonewall Jackson in the Civil War. We remember Patton. We remember those that were strong in battle. And God remembers them. And he writes about them. And we are, to, we are to emulate those men. Not those that are weak in faith. Not those that falter and, and, and don't believe the promises of God. But we need to have strength like Joshua, like Caleb. We are the Joshua generation. We're living in the last days and uh, there's going to be a lot of spiritual battles going on for the church in these last days. A lot of warfare and we need to hang in there. We need to strengthen one another. We need to strengthen one another's faith. And oftentimes we complain to one another and that's okay sometimes. Sometimes we need to vent. I understand that. And I vent sometimes to my friends and they vent to me. But we have to be careful that we're not out of balance and that it's not a constant venting, a constant uh, venting of our trials, our troubles, our tribulations, and living as if we, we, we're not going to be victorious because it affects others. We don't want to cause others' hearts to melt. We don't want to cause others not to believe the promises of God. And it's tough. If you look at my life, you'd, you'd say, wow, where's God? Where's God in his life? Why is he so seemingly forsaken? Why is he so broke? Why is he so destitute? Why is he so, why is he struggling so hard? Why does he uh, seem like the world's against him? Why does everything seem to blow up in his face? Why is everything a closed door? Why does everything end in failure? Why doesn't he just give up? How is he still hanging in there? And, and it's just God's grace. Because I know that what he started in me, he will finish. And I understand that all things work out for good to them who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. That God could take even our bad situations and make us stronger through them. That he can make us bring more glory to his name through what we go through. He has a reason for it. And we have to believe that. Why do I have it so hard? Probably because God's got great plans for you. Probably because God's going to greatly use you. A great preacher once said that God never used anybody greatly who he never hurt very deeply. He's going to hurt you deeply if he's ever going to use you. He's going to put you through the fire. He's going to put you through hard times. He didn't greatly use Daniel. But first, he put him through some hard times. He didn't greatly use Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they didn't raise up as leadership until they went through some things. 
that he didn't greatly use Joseph until he put him through trials and tribulations, being betrayed of his family and or his brothers and also being forgotten in prison, being falsely accused even to get into prison. Sure don't look very good, does it? Sure doesn't look like God's keeping his promises. Sure looks like what Joseph dream was just a big sham or just some kind of uh, pipe dream. But it wasn't, was it? He ended up in leadership position. He ended up in second in command in Egypt. He ended up being the savior of his people and savior of his own family. Why? He never lost sight of the promises of God. And we are not to lose sight of him either. As yet I am as strong this day. Uh, verse 12. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fence. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him. And, and we're blessed of God. And God blesses us. Never forget who's in our corner. Never forget who's given the promises. It's, it's Jesus Christ. And gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. And one day we will get all that he, he plans to give us. He will even give us lands. He will give us authority. He will give us crowns. He will give us uh, rewards, jewels, rubies. He will give us treasures. He, and we're laying up treasures in this life. Don't give up. Don't think that you're all done. Don't think that this life doesn't matter and I might as well throw in a towel. There's going to be great reward for those who hang in there, for those who trust God, for those who, who, who persevere to the end. Hang in there because one day Joshua is going to bless you in a way that you never imagine. Jesus Christ is going to give you reward that you could never fathom in this life. So many people are short-sighted. So many people, they'll take the counterfeit of a reward. They'll take what the devil gives them. They'll take drugs instead of even receiving the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can give them. And some people even that have the Holy Spirit, they turn to pornography or they turn to drugs or they turn to alcohol or they turn to whatever or maybe even just sports or living vicariously through sports heroes why because it's a way of coping with things instead of allowing the holy spirit to help us through our problems we kind of use something else as a crutch to get us through our problems but they never do they just make our problems worse and we need to turn to the one who can bless us in our problems, the one who can give us the victory over all our foes, Jesus Christ. He is the savior of them who believe, and he is not just our savior from hell and to get us to heaven, but he is our savior in this life. He is our savior every day. He is our savior every day from the, the battles we have with sin if we would just so acknowledge it. If we would just so have that mind that was in Christ. If we would just humble ourselves and allow grace to uh, overcome our battles with the flesh, with the, with the sin in our life. God wants to give us victory, but we have to believe him, believe his promises. Hebron therefore uh, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel and God is looking for us to wholly follow him. He's looking to sanctify us and set us apart wholly, not just our spirit, but our minds also, which is our soul and our flesh even to be uh, put under our body, to be put in subjection and to deny ourselves, to deny our flesh, to deny pleasures, to deny going after worldly pursuits, but to pursue God to his fullest. The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. It's a book and they have an audio book of it. And I recommend that uh, to anybody who's pursuing God. And it's, it's, it's quite, the, uh, quite the thing to pursue God and receive him as savior, but then yet to spend your whole life pursuing him and uh, get more and more of that salvation because he is eternal life. We get more and more life out of him. We get more and more joy out of him. We get more and more peace out of him. We get more and more victory out of him. 
but we got to continuously look to him and pursue him. And the pursuit of God, I think every single saved person is still pursuing God, pursuing Jesus more and more each day. And, and Jesus is strengthening him after the inner man more and more, the more we pursue him. And it's all up to you. However strong you are today in your faith, that's, uh, that's up to you. As much as you want to believe God, as much as you want to pursue him, it's your choice. God's not going to force you. God's not going to make you believe. God's not going to make you cross over Jordan. God's not going to make you take on the, the giants in your life. God's not going to force you into it, but he's going to compel you to go. He's going to tell you about the courage you ought to have because he goes before you. But are you going to believe it? Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day. And, and, and remember, Caleb means wholehearted. And then if you pronounce a little bit different uh, in Hebrew, uh, uh, it actually can mean dog. But then dogs are very loyal, aren't they? And I seem to remember that the Jews referred to people that are Gentiles as dogs, even half-breeds as dogs. Here we have a half-breed, Caleb, who is part Jew and, and part Kenizzite, who is of the tribe of Judah, Judah but is also of the Kenizzites. And he doesn't use that as an excuse. Oh, I'm not full-blooded Jew, so therefore maybe this promise is not for me. And he is a type of the church because we are not all Jews that are of the church, but we're Jews inwardly because of our faith, the faith like Abraham, and uh, because of the circumcision of the heart. Uh, but, you know, the church is largely comprised of Gentile people, of dogs, Gentile dogs. And we've seen how God went after that half-breed woman at that well, the woman at the well, how she was uh, not fully an Israelite. She was, uh, oh, what, what, I'm trying to remember what, what they were called now. Forgive me, my mind's going. A Sumerian. There we go. And God didn't stumble at the fact that she was a Samaritan, that she was of the land of Samaria, did he? No, he went for her. And there was a woman that said she needed her daughter to be healed. It was her son or her daughter, and, and she would not take no for an answer, and she was a Gentile. And what did Jesus Christ say? It's not meat for me to take what's for the, the children's food and give it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She could have been offended. She could have said, you know what, you're right. And I'll just go up somewhere else for, for my help. But no, she went to him. Nothing could sway her. And that woman that went and touched the hem of his garment, nothing could sway her in her mind that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And we need to have the same attitude. You know, just because we were not maybe born into a family that was a, a family of the faith, we were not born Jews or we were not born Baptist or born Christians or born in the faith. It doesn't matter because we have a big God, that a God that will come for those that are the, on the outskirts. He will come for those that have gone astray. He will leave the 90 and 9 and he, is special, he specializes in coming after those that are forsaken by the world, those that are the rejects. He specializes in, in them. And here we see Caleb, a Gentile dog who exercises very strong faith. We see Jonah preach to the Ninevites who were Gentiles. And Jonah was a type of Jesus Christ. And when he preached to those Gentiles, and when the Jews rejected him, he went to the Gentile people. And the vast majority of saved people are Gentile people. And the Ninevites repented at the preaching of Jonah. And many Gentiles repented at the preaching of Jesus, at the preaching of his disciples, at the preaching of his saints today. Those that preach publicly, many Gentiles believe the report. And... Uh, 
Yeah, God wants each and every one of us to be saved. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And Caleb is a picture of those Gentiles being saved. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God. And the name of Hebron before was Kerjarth Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. But before I get into that, there's one thought that I'd like to to share with you that's kind of interesting. That when Caleb sought out that land, it is rumored by Jewish historians that he went to Hebron, that he went to Mechphelah, I believe that's how you pronounce it, which is the burial site of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and also of jo uh, uh, Jacob. And even rumored, as some historians say, that it is the burial place of Adam and Eve. And I believe they call it the place of four couples, which I don't know if Jacob, I'm, I'm assuming J Jacob's wife would have been buried there too, but I didn't see where that was written. And I believe he went there because it was a reminder of the promises of God, the promise of resurrection. And, uh, you know, that was strength to him. And that land never got out of his mind. And that's the land that he wanted, that mountain that place, that burial site of the great patriarchs and their wives. And I believe that that also propelled him and kept him going and kept him strong. Just the thought of maybe one day I'll be buried there as well, along with the patriarchs. And one day at the resurrection, I'll resurrect there. Just a thought, you know. And uh, we'll finish it off here. And the name of Hebron before was... Kerjarth Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. And here we see that God mentions a great man among the Anakims. And you know, great men aren't always right. Great men aren't always brilliant men. Great men aren't always men that you should emulate or follow. Great men are, are sometimes defeated. And here, a great man in a worldly sense, a great man and probably idolized by his people was not a right man. And Caleb, an old man, was able to defeat him. Caleb, an underdog, <laughs> and as Caleb means dog, he comes through and he defeats this giant. We must remember that in the story of David and Goliath, Goliath is still remembered. And the greatness of the foe just more so shows the greatness of the conqueror of that foe. And maybe that's why it's mentioned. Maybe that's why this great man of the Anakims was mentioned. Just for the same reason that Goliath and his name was mentioned this great warrior that nobody wanted to fight, that even King Saul didn't want to fight, this little shepherd boy overcame. And this great man that nobody else would mess with, I didn't see anybody else chomping at the bit to get at him. But here, an old 85-year-old man who is confident in the Lord goes and defeats this great giant. And there was other giants there too in the land, and he defeated them all, didn't he? Well, he, <laughs> we'll see there was a little bit more enemies that he actually had a man that would go and defeat these other enemies that he would give him his daughter. And, and we'll see that. I believe it's in the next chapter, next couple chapters. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's an interesting book. It's not an easy book to read. It's easier towards the beginning, in my opinion, but the further you get into it, I think it gets more and more complicated, at least to teach and to preach and maybe to get, uh, the right applications and whatnot out of it and but it's it's a journey i've been preaching this book for quite a while now and i pray that the lord will help me to just keep going and never give up and uh, be like caleb this has been approved unto god and i hope you join me again next time god bless you